Hello, my name is Mark Bowen. I'm a horticulturist by profession. I've uh, been in the business a little over 30 years now, and here we are today to talk about uh, Southeast Texas native plants. When approaching a landscaping project, if, if um, gardeners and landscapers alike can back up a little bit and think about um, what plants are natural companions to each other, then they'll end up with a, a landscape that functions as an ecosystem. And when a, a landscape functions as an ecosystem, it's going to be a lot tougher. It's going to tend to be a lot more uh, drought tolerant, um, you know, rainy period tolerant, um, and also it'll provide much more uh, wildlife habitat, much better wildlife habitat. And then also if there are any plant losses over the years, if there's any attrition, if, if people plant in terms of communities of plants that are natural companions, uh, then any bare spots that might develop will t tend to get filled in by you know, other plants uh, over time. So it tends to be more resilient as far as the landscape goes. Okay, here we have um, wild ageratum. This plant is, is on its way to going dormant. Here we are in, in early December. It tracks an incredibly diverse array of, of pollinators. And of course, these pollinators are very important um, for food production. Um, also, a lot of the, the um, insects that are attracted are considered beneficial in insects in terms of they go off and take care of different pests that um, insects that we consider pests, whether it's agriculture or to people. And uh, so this is an important plant. So this is um, an area native. This is called uh, wax myrtle. And it's a very versatile, um, uh, large shrub to small tree. It's also very valuable for wildlife. Its berries are known to attract at least 37 different species of birds, which is really important. It's evergreen, so it provides good cover for wildlife. Um, it does need full sun. And it's very important to you know sight it in full sun and not in the shade. If it's sighted in a shady wet spot, it'll gradually decline. This is called um, tai tai or or um, leatherwood. Uh, so this is a, a large shrub to small tree. Its range is anywhere from about eight feet to to um, in the mid 20s. And um, and this is a plant that you often will find on the in wetlands. So it'll handle it very wet. So if you have a site that's just already wet and you're not looking to drain it, this is an is a incredible plant that you know, can be added to that spot. So here we have um, uh, one of the American holly cultivars. This is Savannah holly. Uh, Savannah, these normally grow, their height range is usually about 20 to 30 feet tall. And this plant can grow, actually, uh, it, it's usually best if it starts out in full sun, but as, as it, if the area at some point becomes shady, um, this this tree will often be able to transition. You know, in the wild, they often do grow as an un understory trees. Okay, so here we have the longleaf pine. This is a pine tree that's underrepresented in the greater Houston area. The longleaf pine does need an area that drains off fairly well, so like deep, loose soils, particularly see on the, the north side of the greater Houston area, tend to be very uh, well adapted for this longleaf pine. Here's one of the main, was one of the, one of the, what they call the big seven uh, native grasses. This is Gulf Muley. Um, so this is a, this Gulf Muley is, um, is on the smaller side. So it typically, its height range is usually anywhere from one to three feet. And it prefers areas that drain off fairly well, that are um, adequate to well-drained and full sun. This right here is uh, Liatris. This is a, another one of the original native prairie components. These plants do need full sun. They need a fairly well, at least adequate drained uh, to well-drained um, um, soil profile. And they're great pollinator plants. They attract lots of beneficial insects. And um, of course, their butterflies are very, very fond of this plant. Okay, so this is another uh, prairie component. This is wine cup. Uh, this is a low growing uh, um, uh, perennial wildflower. It's a great pollinator plant and it's, and it's very good at preventing erosion. It tends to hug the ground and kind of fill in various bare spots in the prairie. Okay, here we have um, one of the, the native verbenas. Uh, so verbenas are, are popular with a, a host of pollinators, of course, including, including butterflies. Um, they grow very well um, in hot, dry, sunny areas. And so, and they have kind of a creeping um, um, carpet-like habit, and uh, they're super drought tolerant, which is which is really great, and they don't have any um, any insect or, or disease problems. Okay, so here we have uh, cardinal flower. So this is another area native that 
that really likes it wet. So this is a plant that does need routine moisture. Uh, it has beautiful flowers, tracks uh, hummingbirds. It typically does best if it has a little bit of um, protection from the sun during during the hot, you know a hot summer. So where it gets maybe filtered light or morning sun, it's usually going to do best. Okay, here we have coral honeysuckle. So this is a, a native vine that produces these tubular uh, flowers that are very, um, very vital to hummingbirds. So it mostly blooms during late spring and early fall during hummingbird migration. Again, this is called coral honeysuckle. So by now you've heard about a variety of water smart gardening and landscaping techniques and approaches. For more information, visit watersmart.tamu.edu and good luck with your gardening projects.